Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala uh, in his tafsir of Surah Al-Asr uh, it's very concise, it's very brief and beneficial and it's a good reminder for us uh, just some very brief benefits from this surah which is Azimah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem A'udhu billah min shaitan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wal asr inna l-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amanu al-salihati wa tawasu bil-haqqi wa tawasu bil-sabr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem he swears by the time by al-asr Verily mankind is in a loss except those who believe and do righteous good deeds and recommend one another to the truth and recommend one another to patience. Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, commenting about this, uh, this verse, this chapter in the Quran, he says, Allah swears by al-Asr, namely night and day time, during which humankind performs uh, actions and deeds, performing, uh, saying that every human being stands in a loss. Indeed, the loser is the opposite of the winner. There are various differing degrees of loss. There is the ultimate loss wherein one loses his, uh, this life and the hereafter. And as a consequence, stands to lose the delight of paradise, instead earning the hellfire. So that's the ultimate loss. Then he says, there is also the partial loss. Allah made a general statement here that all humankind is in loss, uh, either partial or total, except those who acquire the four qualities mentioned therein. He said they are to have faith in what Allah commanded to have faith in. Faith cannot be attained and cannot be whole and complete without ilm, without knowledge, which is in part, which is a part of faith. So that's a very important faida there that the Imam is uh, emphasizing that we require ilm. We need Islamic knowledge uh, in order to complete our faith, to have strong faith. That you can't have strong faith based on jahil, based on ignorance. Because if you remain ignorant of your, your religion, how is it that you can know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly? How is it that you can know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends for you? How is it... That, that you know how to uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to use your time wisely illa bil ilm, except with Islamic knowledge. And uh, uh, the, the Prophet sallallahu said, Talib al ilm fariditun ala kulli muslim wa muslima. That seeking Islamic knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim uh, believer, uh, believing man and believing woman. That it's an obligation upon us all, not that we all have to be ulama, not that we all have to be talib uh, tulab al ilm, but we all need to know at least basic knowledge of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to know how to pray properly. You know what, need to know how to make wudu properly. You need to know how, if you have some wealth, to make zakat. We fast Ramadan. We need to know how to fast Ramadan. We need to know those basic ahkam of Ramadan. We need to know if you, make, if you have the wealth and you're able to make the hajj, you need to know how to make it properly. And if you're able to make umrah, you need to to know how to make umrah properly and if you uh, uh, in, in all the acts of ibadah you need to know that and you need to know the wajib which is tawheed you need to know uh, basics about uh, the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the creator and the sustainer of us uh, tawheed al-rububiyah and you need to know tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat the divine names and attributes you need to know that you cannot uh, give those sifat those characteristics to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem لَيْسَ كَمِتْلِي شَيْهُ وَسْعْمِيُ الْبَصِيرُ that there is nothing that resembles him to Barak wa ta'ala and he is all hearing and all seeing so you need to know you need to affirm those divine characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he hears everything and he sees everything and also so we affirm those attributes but we don't make a likeness and a resemblance between his creation because he says well, uh, there is nothing that resembles Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. But we do affirm that He has divine attributes of hearing and seeing. And you and I possess hearing and sight. But it's not like Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala's, nor is His Tabarak wa Ta'ala like ours. Ours is naqs. 
our sifat, our characteristics, we have uh, shortcomings, we are imperfect, we have limits. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Samiun Basir, he hears and sees everything. So you need this knowledge. We need that. And we need to know Tawheed al ibadah We need to know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That is obligatory knowledge. So there is al anafia al-wajib. There is wajib uh, uh, knowledge that we need to have of, 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 of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need that. We have to have it. So he said, uh, when he was talking about Surah Al-Asr, he said they are to have faith in what Allah yeah, as far as the four qualities he mentioned, they are to have faith in what Allah commanded to have faith in. Faith cannot be attained and cannot be whole and complete without knowledge, which is a part of Iman. It's a part of faith. To perform righteous deeds. And this entails all acts of righteousness. And you're only going to have that through Ilm. That's why it's so important, knowledge. How are you going to know what, it, what is righteous and what is, what, is, what, is, uh, what is sinful? You only know the halal and the haram through knowledge of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the only way you're going to know it. You're not going to know it from our ra'i, from our opinion. You're not going to know it just from your common sense. You're not going to know riba is haram just from your common sense. Because some people are even saying there's whole communities that are saying it's okay to buy one house on riba, that it's a necessity. So you're only going to know those things based on the Book of the Sunnah. And the only way you're going to know the basic Book of the Sunnah is through knowledge. It's through Ilm and Nafi. So we have to gain some basic knowledge of our faith. And he says, which is a part of faith to perform righteous deeds. And this entails all acts of righteousness, inward and outward, having to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights. How do you know the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know that from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the book in the Sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said was, uh, while he was on a donkey with Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala in, he said, Ya Mu'adh, tadri ma haqa Allah al-ibadi wa ma haqa al-ibadi Allah. And then Mu'adh said, Allah wa Rasulu wa alam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on a donkey with Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala in, and he said, Ya Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? And then Mu'adh responded, he said, Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet ﷺ then responded, he said, Haqq Allah al ibadin ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa aqli ibadi Allah in la yu'adhiba man la yushriku bi shayin. So the Prophet ﷺ responded to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he said, the right of Allah upon his servant is that he uh, worships him and him alone. So there's your haqq of Allah. Because you only know that through ilm. That's how you know it. You know it from that hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu and other adilla min kitab illa wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you know that. That's how you gain. You have to have that knowledge. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wa haqqa ibadi ala Allah and la yu'adhiba man la yushriku bi shayin. And the right of the servant upon Allah is that he doesn't punish him if he doesn't associate any partners with him. So that comes through ilm. That's showing us the importance of knowledge and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. So he said, to perform righteous deeds, this entails all acts of righteousness, inward and outward, having to do with Allah's rights, which is to worship him and alone. And also the rights of his slaves, that we have to have good manners. How do we know what denotes good manners in Islam? Is it just common sense? Common sense is la shak, we need common sense. And that's a ni'mah min ni'amillah. But how do we know specifically with uh, according to the shara, what is what is good uh, righteous conduct and the importance of good righteous manners? How many people claim to be from Ahl Sunnah and they have the worst of manners? Manners like beasts and animals, and sometimes worse than the beasts and animals because we see the mercy and gentleness from the beasts and the animals, but we don't see that from some of the people. Some of the people are wicked in their manners and how they deal with people, and then they claim to be Ahl Sunnah, and then they claim to be of the people foremost and following the Salaf Asari, and they claim to be on good and khair. The Prophet said, but they, they have their own opinion. They have opinion from Shaykh so-and-so and Shaykh so-and-so, and so -and -so, but we are going to go with what the Messenger said. There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than husn al-khulq, than good manners. And that means those good manners, as we studied when we went through Bulgh maram what Sheikh uh, Imam bin Uthaymeen mentioned about that, he said, Yashmal Kulushay, what bin Baz Kaman also says this, and what Kadir bin Ulama Salaf, that they let us know that part of the husn al-khulq, those righteous manners, is, it includes the haqq of Allah. That there's the haqq of Allah and there's the haqq of, of his ibadi, you know, of his servants. So, 
that is uh, righteous manners is, is, is super important. And we know that through ilm. We know that through ilm. We know uh, that, uh, you know, ma min shayna khulubi mizayna mu'min yom al qiyama min husn al khulq. There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So careful with your tongues. And we know those manners through knowledge, through knowledge of the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And we know the rights and we know the, their importance and their manzil and their status, even if people want to belittle their manzil and their status of righteous deeds and being kind and gentle towards people and having husn al and not being pessimistic towards people. People want to negate that. People want to belittle those things. But we know that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer. So it shows us that of course Tawheed, uh, the, the, the worship of Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala alone is foremost. But also in Husn al Tawheed is included in there as well. Because that's the right of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we also have to consider and be aware of the rights of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we treat people with how we want to be treated and we treat people and we love for our brother what we love for our, ourselves because that's Iman that's a part of Iman as our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said so he said Imam uh, Sa'di he said uh, and also the rights of his slaves whether obligatory or recommended so we need to know what is uh, an obligation and what is recommended you know giving the salams passing salams back to your brothers and sisters What's the hukum? You know, is it a, is it an obligation? Is it mustahab? We need to know these things, and we only know that from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we only know that because if we have knowledge of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So then he said to enjoin truth. Truth consists of faith and performing good deeds. This type recommends, encourages, and advises each other to abide by the truth. So that's dawah. Uh, to have patience regarding obedience to Allah and in keeping away from disobedience to him, as well as towards the painful parts of predestination des designated by Allah. Meaning that the Qadr, you know, we're not always gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be in accordance with our desires. It's the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khayrihi wa sharrihi, but your job is to accept it. Do your best to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible, and fear and, 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 and try and accept the qadr, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You just had a death in the family. You just had, find out you had this illness. You just found out you, you lost some of your wealth or lost all of your wealth. This is the decree of Allah. And if you are uh, pleased and do your best to not uh, go to disobedience in reacting to that decree and just say qadr Allah ma sha fa'al and strive your best to hold and restrain yourself during that masiba, during that trial and tribulation, the reward is immense. And you don't know what Allah may have for you around the corner to replace what you lost. And may Allah help the Muslims everywhere and bless them all. I mean, he said to have patience regarding obedience to Allah and keeping away from the haramat as well as towards the painful parts of predestination designated by Allah, as we mentioned. With the first and second qualities, one perfects himself. With the last two qualities, one perfects others. When one joins all four qualities, one is saved from loss and will instead earn the greatest success. So that it's having all those characteristics and those characteristics so that way we, we know and we, we make sure we understand that. We at least come away with that from this. Is first is that we have, uh, as Imam Muhammad, he mentioned uh, that in Surah Al-Azhar he said that it combines uh, uh, it combines, you know, knowledge. He said, "Elm, who are ma'ruf of Allah, ma'ruf of the Nabi, ma'ruf of the Deen of Islam, be adil." It is knowing a lot. It's knowing uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's knowing the textual proofs with a bil, uh, with adilla, with evidence. And he said, "Athani al amalabi." So it's practicing that knowledge. That's also what we learned from this lesson that we need to practice that knowledge. What da'wah to ilay? And the third thing is da'wah that we should give da'wah to the extent of our ability. Share the knowledge with the people. Remind one another. Remind the mu'minin. Well, fourth is that we have sabr ala adafi, that we are patient when people slander your name, when people attack you physically, and whatever the case may be. And may Allah help the Muslims everywhere, bless the Muslims everywhere, forgive the Muslims everywhere. Please, Ya Rabbil Alameen, forgive us for our many shortcomings, our many sins, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
bless the, our brothers and sisters in China to have the oppression and the evil and the wickedness and the shaitania that is oppressing them removed from them and may Allah bless them to flourish and increase their risk and protect them and preserve them and help us to be assistance and support and to awan ala bitter wa taqwa with them wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad